Well, welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm joined on the podcast today by Jane Cowie, author of the new novel, One of the Boys. Author Christine Doucher wrote about the novel, Nature, Nurture, and Parenting Styles Go to War in Jane Cowie's Tense Thriller with a Twist, the kind of book that is something to say and says it well. Jane, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. It's lovely to be here. If someone hasn't yet heard about your novel, One of the Boys, how would you describe the novel? Uh, Craigie, uh, in a nutshell, it's a novel about uh, a near future recognizable society in which we have discovered a gene which gives you a predisposition for violent behavior, particularly in boys. And we can not only test for it, but we've started testing newborn baby boys to see if they carry this gene. So it, it asks the question, really, would you have your son tested? Do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to writing the novel? Well, I, I, the book prior to this one was about um, a curfew for men in order to make women safe in public spaces <laughs> at night. So I kind of have history of writing this sort of novel that examines the intersection, I suppose, between technology and the law and human behaviour um, in a feminist way. So when we got to the second novel, I was really looking for an idea which kind of carried those themes forward, but was totally different. Um, so I went with a completely different technology. Um, and genetic testing and the idea that there are things which are controlled by our genes really has gripped tightly onto the public imagination. And almost every day, it seems that there's another news article going, they've now discovered um, a gene which causes something else. So, you know, we've, sure. we know about genes for cancer, but we're now talking about genes for Alzheimer's, um, genes for all sorts of things. And it's not um, entirely implausible that we will start to discover genes that occur more frequently in people who display certain behaviours, positive and negative. So that was really where the idea came from. Um, we're digging into genetics now. We love this idea of born this way when it suits, not when it doesn't. Um, and if, if we take that to its conclusion, born this way, are men born to be violent? Is it some men? Is it true that boys will be boys? And if so, we can find these genes and we can do something about it. So once you had that idea, what kind of research did you do as you were writing the novel? So I should start by saying I'm not a biologist. So <laughs> the genetics in this novel, we're talking really, really basic Sure. So I, I did some sort of reading on um, a genetics and genetic testing and that that sort of thing. But it's it's really more about the idea of if you could test for it, would you, than the actual science of how the testing would work and how the gene would work. So I didn't do huge amounts of research. I just did enough to kind of make it feel plausible, I think. Sure. Well, can you tell us about your initial fiction writing journey that led you to writing and getting your first novel published? Well, Craig, here, it's been a long time. I shall tell you, I wrote my first novel. I had my first attempt when my son was 11 months old. He's now nearly 16. Um, <laughs> I was at home with two children. I'd been at home with them for several years. I felt like my brain was dissolving and leaking out of my ears. I didn't have any childcare. I didn't have any money. I had a library card and a laptop. And I thought, I'm going to write a book just, just to see if I can. You know, it's, it's a project. I can do it in half an hour a day when they're asleep, just to see if I can write something, set myself an arbitrary word limit of 100,000 words. I had no idea what I was doing. It was <laughs> absolutely awful. But I got to the end. I did it. And then I did it again, and then I did it again, and I did it again and again and again, <laughs> quite a significant number of times. Um, and everything I wrote was dreadful. I then began to realize that maybe I needed to learn how to write a novel and there was stuff I didn't know. 
So that's when I started doing sort of writing courses and reading books about how to write fiction and really improving. And once I got to that point, um, stuff started to sell. And it was it was small things at first for not a lot of money, and then it, it built and it built um, until eventually, obviously, um, I was signed by a big traditional publisher and kind of got to the point that I'm at now. So can you tell us about your writing process when you were working on one of the boys? You said earlier you had this initial idea and then you did a little bit of research um, about uh, genetics and, and um, biology. So so once you had that initial idea, are you someone who sits down and writes an extensive outline or did you just kind of dive into the novel? How does that work for you? So I would say that my process, first of all, I would say my process has really changed over the years as I've got to understand more about how fiction works and how to write fiction. With this particular book, I did a really extensive um, plan before I started writing. So I had, there were some ideas that came to me really quickly. I knew I wanted to write about sisters, um, two sisters, two boys born very close together. Um, one sister with a very good standard of living, one sister who doesn't have any money. So I, I put all these conflict things in place from the off. But I then had a really detailed chapter outline of exactly what was going to happen in the book in each chapter. So I knew all the turning points. I knew what was going to happen. I knew I wanted a split timeline. So there's a timeline that starts when the boys are born. And then there's a present day timeline when the boys are 18. Um, and the two sort of weave together. And I wrote my initial sort of first draft following that chapter plan. I still had to do massive rewrites at the end. I'm sorry <laughs> to say um, it still required a lot of rewriting. So I do both my plan and then I have to rewrite anyway to um, catch all the things that I hadn't been able to figure out when I was planning. Well, what writing advice? I mean, you talked about this this process for you, where you just wrote manuscript after manuscript as you were, you know, enjoying the writing process and trying to figure out, you know, how to 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 write successful fiction. What advice would you offer for those who are starting on that journey of writing their own stories or novels? I think there are, there are several key things. I think. Writing early manuscripts that fail is not something to be disheartened by because they failed. Because what you do when you do that is that you build writing stamina. And that's really important because writing a novel is a big project and it takes a long time. And you build that stamina by writing a 100,000 word project. You also learn that you can throw stuff away and it's not the end of the world. That's <laughs> really important. Because even now I can tell you when you are a published writer, you are going to write books or three quarters of a book and your editor is going to turn around and go, do you know what? I don't like it. Or a year ago, we thought it was right for market, but actually the market's moved since then and we don't like it anymore. Can you do something else? Um, so you really build that stamina, that muscle, that ability to just throw stuff away and start again and to know that there's more in the tank every time. Um the next thing I would say is that you need to learn how to plot. Learning how to plot is really important. Novels aren't magic. Um, when they're done really well, it feels like magic because you can't see the joins and the work that went into them. But a, a, a novel has a particular shape. It has a particular form. It fulfills certain criteria, and you have to learn what those criteria are. Otherwise, you're just writing characters going on a rambling journey, a series of consecutive <laughs> events. And that's not a story. A story is a specific thing and you need to learn what it is, learn plot, learn how to write one. Um, I had one more thing and I'm trying to remember what it was. So yeah, build your writing muscle, learn how to plot, learn all the separate techniques. I remember what it is. The third thing I would like to say is that you need to be, or you can be, strategic in your writing, in your choice of story idea. If your goal is to get published, and we're talking selling a book to a well-known publisher, potentially for 
a decent amount of money, the question you need to be asking yourself is not what's the book I always wanted to write, but what is the book I can write for them that they can sell? That's really important. It might be the book of your dreams, but primarily publishing houses and editors are looking for a book that's going to shift a million copies. And some books are more likely than others to fall into that category. And you can work from the book idea, from the basic elevator pitch, that's your starting point. There are a million copy seller elevator pitches, and then there are other elevator pitches that are not. And taking the time to figure out from all the ideas you've got, which is the idea that has a million copies in it will boost you massively once you start submitting, because that's what agents and editors are looking for. Assuming you've got all your writing skills um, strengthened, that's going to be the thing that makes the difference. And that that's really interesting. And I've done a lot of interviews and I rarely hear uh, an author um, give that specific advice. And I think it's, I think it's um, very relevant on that note. What has been the process for you? I mean, you said you had this idea about, you know, the idea, is there a gene for violence? And, and, you know, if so, could you test for it? And would you test for it um, specifically around men? Um, so I guess what I'm I'm trying to ask is uh, when you had other ideas, you talk about this, you know, elevator pitch for a bestseller. Were were there other ideas? And you don't have a, to tell us a spe- specific idea that you had that maybe you put on the back burner because you didn't think it was that that big concept. Well, I was really fortunate with this book because I was obviously for this book I was already signed to a publishing house, so I had. Mm-hmm editors I could talk to. And when we came to doing the second book, um, I came up with half a dozen ideas and we basically sat down and they looked at them and they said, that's the one, that's the idea. Out of the half a dozen that you've come up with, that's the one that we think has got the best, the most marketing potential. So that's kind of how we ended up with that idea. Um, as the driving idea for the second novel. Sure. So are you working on a new novel now? Um, Yeah, I am. I'm working on another book, similar, um, kind of a bit different, um, Mm -hmm. exploring the idea of, how can I put this? We're all on the internet every day. We're all dumping huge amounts of data, personal data (laughs) onto the internet every day. Every click, every like, every play, every swipe, every tweet we hover over, every tweet we don't. Um, And this is all being recorded. And there are algorithms being developed at the moment. Um, If anybody knows anything about, you know, sort of Cambridge Analytica, that sort of thing, which can predict things about us and can tell things about us that possibly we don't even know about ourselves. Um, So the idea is kind of about an algorithm that's developed that can solve cold cases based on somebody's internet footprint. Oh, wow. And I, you know, if you look at things that are currently being developed, I suspect this is something we will see coming in the future. We've already got algorithms being developed at the moment, which can predict if you have early stage cancer based on patterns in your online behavior. Wow. And I don't know if you have run across this story um, uh, in your research. You may want to you may want to take a look at it. It's probably it was before Cambridge Analytica. It was probably I want to say now, maybe six years ago. Um, there's a retail chain here in the U.S. called Target, um, and I don't know if you've run across this story, but they um, came up with an algorithm and they could tell by what people were purchasing, whether they were pregnant or not. Yeah, I've come across this one and they started sending them, started sending women coupons in the post for baby products. And all these women were going, excuse me, why are you sending me coupons for baby products when I haven't told anybody I'm pregnant? And what Target then did was they continued to send women, these women, um, coupons for baby products, but they would throw in coupons for 
lawnmowers and beer <laughs> so that it looked like the baby coupons were just in this random mix, but they absolutely weren't an answer. Yeah, they yeah. really can tell um, with yeah, an astonishing that's degree of accuracy what's going on in your life. So what novels have you read recently that you enjoyed? Um, crikey, I'm trying to think. I'm reading some old stuff at the moment, actually. I've been reading a lot of Daphne du Maurier, um, which I've got really into, having read, obviously, you know, everybody's read um, Rebecca and my cousin Rachel, but a lot of her other novels, less well-known, just absolutely wonderful. Um, and that's really what I'm reading at the moment. Where can people find you online if they want to learn more about you and your novels? So online, you can find me on Instagram, um, at Carrie Jane. Uh, same handle on Twitter, if people want to message me. Um, as you may have gathered, based on what I've just said, I'm not a massive social media user because I'm trying <laughs> to limit my footprint, not because there are any bodies buried anywhere, but just in case. Um, but yeah, those two places, Twitter and Instagram. That's wonderful. Well, again, we've been speaking to Jane Cowie, author of the new novel, One of the Boys. The novel is available now, so go buy a copy. And Jane, thanks for doing this interview. It's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely.